Hey guys, Fishmonger here. I'm doing a quick video today trying to showcase um, some of the value you can get in a GTX 1060 card and compare that to a GTX 1070 or 1070 Ti. Now this is going to be um, data that I'm collecting using my cards, so as usual your mileage may vary. Uh, I currently run three 1070 Ti's in my rigs. I have two 1070's and a bazillion 1060's. Actually it's more like 13 uh, 1060s right now. Um, I have a couple different models of this card. Um, the one I do like and I do recommend is this model, which I just affectionately known as the 6162, which I call it the 6162 because pretty much all the models for EVGA are the same, minus this number here, they change that. Um, the smaller brother is the 6160, um, essentially the same, however, the cooling on it is far inferior. And by how much inferior? Well, if we take a look at one of my mining rigs here, this is my Bahama Mama Mining Expert rig. This is the B250 Mining Expert uh, 13 GPU motherboard. You can see I have some of my 1060s uh, sitting at a nice cool 58 degrees Celsius uh, with 78 watts running through them with a fan at only 60%. Yet I also have some of them running pretty much, well, they're all set to 80 watts, so it's a 80 watt max. 64 degrees Celsius, so this is a good uh, amount of uh, temperature higher, so 6 degrees Celsius higher. However, I'm having to run the fan at 80% on this versus 60% on this. So yes, every card you see in here that's a GTX 1060 that's got a really low fan speed and a really low temperature is one of these 6162 cards with the increased cooler. The, the cooler on this thing is, is 10 times better Okay, in my opinion, not like mathematically, but it's a nice heat pipe cooler with actual aluminum fins. It runs the whole length of the card. Um, it's really nice. On the model, the 6160s, it's pretty much just one of them spiral cutout kind of hunks of metal on top of the uh, the CPU that, that kind of covers the, the memory too. It's really, really not that good. I mean, you get a big difference. If I had all these fans at the same exact speed, I'd easily be getting a 10 or 15 degrees Celsius difference in the cooling on these cards, and that is a big chunk of change. So if you could spend a little bit more money and get those 61 and 62 models, i definitely recommend it. So what I've done here is I've gone through eBay, and I've looked at the last 25 sales, and that is confirmed sales for each one of these video cards, 1063 gig, 1070, 1070 Ti. And it's actually easy to do. You just go into eBay, you click on the advanced search tab, um, type in what you're searching for, click on sold listings, and then you can further refine it by clicking on like used items, or if you wanted to search for new, you can do that too. I just did used, sold, and when I looked at the data here, um, all this, these values here are all the values in here, the last 25. However, they do omit cards that were listed as for parts are not working, or they omitted the values for cards like this one, which is obviously just one of those cheap China knockoff 1060s. That's not really a 1060. It's like a rebranded 750 or whatever. So that va those values and those data are not in here. Um, I basically got an average uh, from that value. I got the minimum and maximums um, from those values, and then basically the range between the minimum and maximum. And um, this data, while it was great at first, I came to realize it wasn't super accurate because, man, there were some cars in here that were some real big outliers. For instance... Somebody, somebody did sell a 1070 Ti for $320. Yeah, that was a buy it now auction. $320, bucks, free shipping, 1070 Ti. I'll buy them all day at $320. Bucks. That is amazing. Here's a 1070 somebody sold for $310. And somebody actually sold one of these 1060s at $130. Bucks. Yet on the flip side, somebody was also selling cards for $539 for 1070 Ti. And yes, it was a used card. So it just goes to show you that there's a... There's a big difference in price uh, on eBay sometimes. you got to keep your eyes open. Um, so I calculated some values from this, but then I said, you know what? It's not really super accurate just because of how much these fluctuated and varied. So I went over and I cut the numbers down a little bit, and I sorted them, and I took out the two highest or the two most expensive and the two lowest or the two least expensive values from each data set. Um, and that gave me a little bit more of a manageable uh, set of data here, basically saying that um, the average uh, price of a 1060 was 182.38. Um, actually, it's funny, it didn't change too much here. Um, and then again, you see 360 and 440 for the averages. Didn't really change much here. However, the minimum and the maximums really got cut down 
And then the range of values um, also did change a lot as well. Um, standard deviations uh, obviously went down um, because we took out the uh, those outliers, those, those expensive ones, and those really, really cheap ones. So for around $182 on average, you can grab yourself a 1060. 358, uh, 1070, and 440, you can get 1070 Ti. On Equihash, what does that get you? Well, if you're going to run your card at around 85 watts, that's going to get you a little bit over 300 solutions per second on a 1060. On a 1070, I'm getting a little over 430 solutions per second at 105 watts. And then on my 1070 Ti's at about 130 watts, I'm getting about 495 solutions per second. Um, these are running OC values of... 130 megahertz uh, overclock on the core for the 1060, 700 on the memory, um, and then my 1070s and 1070 Ti's are all running 150 over on the core and then 1,000 on the memory. Now, I run Linux, so if you're running Windows, these values here are actually going to be halved. So your my, my 700 is really your 350, but I digress. So looking at these numbers and comparing them, you're going to get a really good, efficient card running Equihash of 4.12 solutions per watt with the GTX 1070. However, it's going to cost you because it is the not, not the most economical card to buy. Uh, the most economical card to buy, if you're limited in money, is these 1060s because they are rocking a solution per dollar of 1.66, which is really superior and blows these other guys out of the water uh, here. Now, it's not the most power-efficient card, as you can see here. It's actually the lowest or the least power-efficient card. However, if you live in an area where you're not really paying a lot uh, for electricity, or if you, you know, have free electricity, um, or you have your rigs spread out so you can put them on different outlets in your home, um, you know, buying these cards at $182 bucks is, is a great deal because they're going to actually be... Um, very efficient when it comes to the price that you pay, which also essentially means that it's going to have a really low ROI on these cards. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, well, you know, that's Equihash. They're only three gigabyte cards. They are limited with how long they're going to last and yada, yada, yada. And you're right. I mean, that's that's one of the downsides to these is there's only three gigabytes of memory on them compared to like the eight gigabytes you get on a 1070 or 1070 Ti. However, you know, you got to ask yourself, what coins are you going to mine? And, you know, what coins in the future are going to come out? And is how much life are you going to get out of those cards before the next series of cards come out uh, that you want to buy? Uh, right now, I am also running Ethereum on these 3 gigabyte cards. In Linux, it's not a problem. I'll get easily 23.5 mega hash a second on each one of these cards. And if you compare the fact that I'm buying them for 182 bucks versus, I don't know, like an RX uh, 470. Um, RX 470s are going to sell, on average, more. I haven't run the numbers on here, but you're looking at, you know, 213, 200, 220, 220, uh, 220, 230, 240, 260. You know, these are going to run you a little bit more expensive. And they're also, uh, you know, you got to go through the issue of the BIOS modding. And you got to do some other funky stuff to get them to work. Um, not saying they can't be uh, good, they can, but they're going to cost you a little bit more up front, and they're a little bit rougher to work with as far as actually getting them to perform on Ethereum with where you want. Now, these uh, 1060s, being little versatile monsters that they are, running high numbers in uh, Equihash, um, and also running uh, fairly high numbers in uh, Ethereum, you know, for the value, I, I'm still going to pump them out. I'm going to say they're a great little deal. Um, I certainly wouldn't buy them new at $252, but I'll certainly buy them used for $180 or even less because, you know, if you play your cards right, you can get them for $170 or lower or even look out for those good deals on eBay. You could find that occasional guy who decides to just sell it for $130 and not give two fucks. Gotta love that. Anyway, this is Fishmonger. I am signing out. I will catch you on the flip side.